In this episode of Mind Pump, your favorite fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. Now, in the beginning of the episode, the first 30 or 40 minutes or so, we do introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about our lives. We mention studies. We talk about exercise. And then we get into the question portion where we answer questions. Mm. So I'm going to go through and give you the breakdown of the whole episode. We started by talking about gyms reopening. So we talk about how there some places it seems like some gyms are reopening and it looks not that different than the way they did before. Mm. And how other areas gyms reopen. You can't stop the gain train. And it's very, very, very different. Then we talked about the workout we did up here in Truckee. Uh, we had a great workout at altitude, so we all had to rest extra long in between sets. I needed a mask. But we did do use the PRX equipment. This equipment is the best gym equipment you can get for your home. They have squat racks that fold into the wall, great plates and bars and Lots and lots of equipment you can use at home. Uh, and we think that it's probably a better option to work out at home than go back to gyms at the moment. And they do have payment plans on their gym equipment. Anyway, you get a discount because you listen to Mind Pump. Just go to prxperformance.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the promo code Mind Pump and get 5% off plus a free MAPS Prime program. PRX, it's dynamite. Then we talked about Joe Rogan going exclusive to Spotify Probably a lot of money there. We talked about how TikTok tops 2 billion downloads in quarter one. That's huge. We talked about somebody leaving Disney to go to TikTok. Kevin Mayer, that's his name. Mm. Uh, Justin brought up a mummy that got found in Siberia, I believe, with tattoos. A cool mummy. Didn't, <laughs> didn't know that, that they did tattoos back then. Yeah. I talked about how a they rebel. identified a human antibody that could be used to treat the coronavirus. We talked about the mental health of people right now being stuck at home. We also talked about how 60% of CFOs don't expect business to return to normal until at least 2021. And then we gave you some good news. It seems that cannabis may actually help prevent coronavirus. Now, don't take my Go word for weed. it. I read it on the internet, so it could be true. Probably not. And then we mentioned Serene, one of our YouTube fitness experts, who she did an amazing video on how to really activate your abs. Make sure you go check that out at Mind Pump TV. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question, what is the best supplement or remedy for joint pain? So this person's got joint pain. They want to know what they can take to help their joints feel better. I did mention Organifi's Move product, which is really good. But really, at the end of the day, joint pain comes from bad movement patterns. By the way, if you want to learn how to move better and learn how to prime your body properly, we have extended our MAPS Prime webinar. This is a free class where Justin teaches you how to prime your body before your workouts. He takes you through some assessments. We did all of the classes already, but because they were so popular, we had so many people mm. that wanted to attend them again. We did one more. It's happening Saturday, May 30th. You can sign up at mapsprimewebinar.com. By the way, even if you don't make it to that day, you get a free replay. You got to feel it to believe it. Try the, it out. The next fitness question, this person wants to know, look, when – with gyms reopening, everyone is investing in at-home gym equipment. Like, what is the best pieces of equipment I should get for my workouts at home? So we talk about the essentials of what can give you good workouts at home. The next question, this person wants to know, look, in your experience, what's the most effective weekly caloric surplus when you're trying to gain weight and muscle? So how much over how many calories you burn should you eat to make that happen while minimizing fat gain? And then the final question, this person wants to know what we think about a weekly 24-hour fast. Like, what's the value? Is there value in doing that? Also, this month, MAPS Starter, our great beginner workout program at home, where all you need is a physio ball and dumbbells, is 50% off. Now, it's also valuable for those of you who have experience. It helps you relearn perfect technique because you are training on a physio ball. But again, it's ideal for the person wanting to get into resistance training. These are people who don't have tons of experience, but they want to reap the metabolism-boosting, body-sculpting effects of the most effective form of exercise that exists, which we know is resistance training. Anyway, look, it's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, no space for the discount.
How excited are you guys for Justin's fan fans only page? <laughs> What's it called again? Weights and cakes. Oh, come on, guys! It's so good. It's still a project undertaking. This is so what's going to get us out of COVID. Me out there. Uh, yeah, this dude. is what's going to get us out of COVID. It's, man. it's another free webinar. <laughs> You've been pushing this idea for a long time, and now it's like, oh yeah, uh, a pandemic. Don't yeah, fight it, it bro. Sense. Be a team player. Yeah, I'm just saying, dude. Know? Anyway, yeah. I was. Uh, <laughs> There's other ways to make money. And then today I get dressed and. Uh, Adam points out that I match perfectly again. <laughs> You're in <a> onesie. <laughs> yeah. They're, okay. You can wear gray on gray. It's just you can't wear that gray on gray. It's the exact same. Yeah. You can't it's, do that. It totally even, is the same. You know what? I, I didn't even think about it. I just put it on today. I'm like, it matches. <laughs> do yeah. you ever think about what you put on? Some, I think you just, sometimes. <laughs> I think, you, I think yeah. you just wear. It's what so it, simple. It's one. <laughs> that's what it yeah. looks like. That's, <laughs> when I go to weddings and stuff, I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Other, otherwise, I don't totally <laughs> think about it. Ready for the day, but, you know, relax. Dude, I am embracing the, the, the like, scrub look. I, well, I know. We did the webinar. I, I announced to our uh, audience that uh, Justin and I, we didn't have Sal today. We brought our, our bum friend here. <laughs> or our homeless guy That's that we took in. Correct. Yeah. Adam, it's homeless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you can't but, say that anymore. Yeah, is that. yeah, I don't think that you works anymore. anymore. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Uh, great workout with you guys the other morning. Yeah. That, that's like workout. Yeah, I had fun. Hold on. In five years, how many times total have we worked out together where we've actually worked out together? Like three times. Is that, would you say that's about Maybe three? a little more than that. Yeah. Under 10. It I was remember like NorCal, and then it was like two other gyms. Yes, I remember the NorCal workout because you guys couldn't lift as much as me. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not no, true. I don't know I that's true at all. That's not true. <laughs> I, 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 back in my body, we were doing a lot of farmer carries. And, no. uh, we did. We did NorCal. We did uh, club sport a few times, and then maybe a couple times in our own studio. And now here, you know. Yeah. Now this was big tech. So Justin and I have already experienced this. Now this is your first time. Working out with the whole PRX setup, right? Uh, yeah, it's um, it's really stable. It's really good. Uh, I, you know, it's it's crazy how they make us a, 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 something that comes off the wall feel more stable than your traditional cage. It's it's anchored mm -hmm. at the wall. Well, what, I remember when Justin was first putting it together. My big concern about putting it on that side was it would eliminate the space to be able to back his truck or my truck in because they're pretty long. And I, I remember him like showing me like with his hands like. Yeah, it's only about. Um, I mean, would you say how much would you say it is like off a the foot? Million. Maybe right. Like a foot. One one yeah. foot. Yeah, foot like half. one foot off. The I was going to insert dick joke, but I held back. <laughs> yeah, he's a halfway the distance yeah. between. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it, it doesn't take up much space at all. But at it was, all. No, but it was no. a great great workout. And you guys are thinking about putting another some kind of cable equipment or something in the, in the on other the side. side over here. Yeah. we'll see how. We'll, we'll see how on. that plays out. We're just thinking about you know, especially racking the dumbbells and everything mm -hmm. and getting everything organized. That's like the last piece to this. Well, it's almost like a five thousand dollar purchase. So we need Justin's yeah. fans fan page to. We do. <laughs> we do need to kick that's that on. That's get your guys yeah. over there. Get you paying. You yeah. know, I'll put out some good content yeah. for you. So you're so how, working how, on some moves. So what happened to your shoulder? Was it while yeah. we were working out? We no, a little bit? no. I just, I mean, I, I aggravated again, but I don't know. I, I feel like every time you try to lift as much as Justin. Remember the squats? <laughs> the squats did it. I mean, the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. I wasn't even trying to go heavy, man. I tell you, uh, I you know back to the talking about how awesome of the the PRX setup. I'm really excited. The, the pull-up bar is the best part about it. Yeah, so what I did with Doug, so Doug uh, is doing maps anabolic phase one. Um, I'm just following whatever. I'm not really following a specific program. I felt like doing a lot of volume that day. So he was doing deadlifts. You're mostly copying me. Mostly, mostly. So he was doing deadlifts. Uh, uh, I did some uh, walking lunges or whatever. Then I did some presses with Justin. Yeah. Then Doug and I got ready to do another back yeah, exercise. No, then me and Adam left. Yeah, you guys left. Right? Yeah. And we were talking or whatever. Yeah. And then also we look outside and you were still working out. Yeah. Kind of. You know what that just reminded me of is jabbing you about copying workouts. Do you remember being a trainer? And like you know, your members that knew you were a trainer in the gym, and then they you would be on your workout time, and then they would be like totally following yes, your workout. Yes, yeah. so you catch. A, so you want to know what I used to catch a glance? We used to look away real quick. We used to, we used to fuck around with clients just yeah. because of that. Oh, so what? Did, so here, so here's what I did. I wonder if you guys. Did this. <laughs> I would jump in Jack Burpee yes. shit like that. Yeah, I, I would do that. some <laughs> exercise I just invented. Yeah, I'd wait and then see other people doing it, or yeah. wait the next day. Yeah. Single leg yeah. pistol squat jumps. Yeah, yeah. like a, like yeah. a curl side lateral. Like I knew you were copying yeah. me. Oh, stop it! Stop it! Yeah, no, no way. I was. I did. The, we did the workout. Doug and I did. How many sets of pull-ups did we do? Ten. At least eight. 
It was, yeah, what we did is we did the very narrow grips because the pull-up bar has got all these different grips. So we did a set on every single I'm gonna grip. I'm going to tell you, that's my favorite part. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love I, those grips. Yeah, yeah. And they're then nice. we worked all the way back in, and then we did a bunch of other stuff, and then I got to do some exercise. This has always been a dream of mine, by the way. It was snowing, and I got to go outside <laughs> and do curls. <laughs> <laughs> hey. This is all Rocky Four. Right? <laughs> Ever since this I saw is, Rocky Four. Okay. So this was yesterday morning, right? Yesterday morning, yeah. uh, you know, we planned this workout together, and you know, we all kind of get our workout done. Uh, and Justin and I head back into the house to like get re- get around, and get ready. I decided to be a nice guy. I'm gonna cook everybody breakfast. So I'm whipping up breakfast. Yeah, it's delicious. Actually. And it's like mm-hmm. you know, I'm 20 minutes into making breakfast, and I thought we were done with our workout. And I see, uh, oh, we got a lot of volume. I see Sal is down to the wife beater, and yep. he's out in the snow, and he's flagging Doug over to take photos of him. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> he didn't pull out the pythons for us. No, no, no. no. Yeah, J- no, Justin no, yells no, out the no. window, "Yo, Jeremy Padilla, what are you doing?" <laughs> No, no, no. I was working out. Doug came outside. <laughs> no, you know, Just you know, casually with the fucking like, camera. Wait a minute. This, <laughs> no, yeah. this is something to take Get a picture of. Get this angle right oh, here with the snow. Oh, my God. Look at how the snowflakes the hits my hot uh, shoulders. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's a, like steam Every is time just coming shoulder, off yes. my <laughs> My ripply biceps. No, what I did was, uh, uh, I, first Doug comes out and he goes, hey, did you want me to do photos with you out, outside? And I said, "Give." I said, come back in 10 minutes. I had to do occlusion. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. So I did occlusion on my arms. You uh, gotta stop doing just that, dude. Ballooned out dude. when fans meet us, they get like, "I know." They're like, like, "Man, you were just, you're like Hulkish there for like a second. <laughs> no, you know? I thought you were gonna be so much bigger no, no, in no, person. That's, that's fully pumped. Yeah. Yeah. When you see me in person, it's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, flaccid. Yes, yeah, <laughs> we're just doing push-ups constantly. Like, oh, like, hey, what's up? Why are Come you sweating? On. You guys, don't, you guys send flaccid dick pics. Come on, exactly. No, why would you do that? It's always, it's always got to be a pump. Although you're throwing a rain out there early, yeah, right? Oh, but yeah. you know what? I will say this. I always forget when I work out at altitude. Uh, oh, boy, yeah. does that make a difference. Yeah. That sucks. Man, yeah. it really gets your lungs. Yeah, I, I feel like I have to rest uh, at least two and a half minutes before I can do my next set, whereas normally I'm resting like a minute or whatever. But Yeah, it, it'll definitely take a while to get adapted to now, this. I, now, I wonder if because the adaptation when you train at altitude, eventually your body adapts. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and you actually perform a little bit better. You yeah. Know, like towards sea level. It's exactly. Then you go back to sea level and then you have better training. Boxers used to do that. Although I think the the, the, the Olympians effect, do it. Yeah. Any serious athlete knows that. Yeah, yeah. I think the effect though only lasts like twenty four or forty eight hours if I'm not. Is that uh, true? Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think it lasts too long. So like if you train at altitude and I think the longer you train at altitude, the longer it lasts, but typically it's like twenty four, forty eight hours, the body starts to adapt. Oh, interesting. In the other way. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, do you guys know what the the latest is on uh, states and gyms reopening? Where I'm starting to hear more of a, more and more of them are opening uh, back up. Well, I've heard definitely Florida, right? Yeah. So I got actually I've had some DMs from. I thought, I thought Texas too. Texas. If I'm not mistaken, I know overseas in some countries they've opened up gyms. Mm-hmm. So here's what's interesting. We did that whole episode on uh, the the future of the gym industry, and you know it's it's going to be challenging. I don't think anybody can disagree. It's going to be challenging. However. I've been getting DMs from people that really highlights the difference in locality, local governments, and the difference between how some handle them and others. I got some DMs from some people, and I forgot where they were at, but they were telling me, you know, the gyms are a little slower. Everybody is, you know, encouraged to to distance each other or to be distanced, excuse me. There's more people cleaning, but otherwise it seems not too bad. And then I have other people who say, oh, it's way different experience. Like I walk in. They take my temperature. There's one gym that takes people's temperature. If you're above yeah. 100.4, they won't let you in. Um, they're only operating at like 40%, I think, capacity. And then you have to you have to sign up to work out. And then every hour, if I'm not mistaken, 24 Hour Fitness did this too. Every hour, they shut the place down and they would do like a 20-minute deep clean of the whole gym. Mm. That's got to be a tough, tough situation to operate You know, yeah. Yeah, in that. Do you guys see the news with uh, Joe Rogan? Oh, oh yeah, about How, Spotify, bro. That is exciting, dude. So uh, explain this to me. What exactly is going on? He said he sold, he licensed his show or he sold licensing the rights for a few years. It's the yeah. rights, okay? For and it's well over a hundred million. We don't know exactly what it is. I believe that's that ties him up for three years. He's giving up the rights now. That means, uh, and the way it works is September 
the transfer begins, so he will be on Spotify by September. By 2021, everything will be off other platforms. So, so he has to also take stuff off. Yes, yeah, so yeah. no more no wow. more on iTunes. iTunes no even more on YouTube, YouTube, which yes. is, yeah, I don't think people realize his reach on YouTube is which almost means, just as big. And, and the reason why I mean, you were asking earlier about, you know, how does something like, how do you value something like that? Uh, and, it, and the reason is because... He's giving up all his rights, which means you won't. You're not going to hear him sell ads like he does right now on a show. Now, I imagine Joe makes a few million dollars at least a year just in in ad revenue. So that's got to be more than that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just sure. Round, yeah, maybe ten million, right? So say ten million dollars a year that he probably makes on on ad revenue at least. Uh, so they got to factor that in because he's going to give that up to Spotify, and Spotify wants all of his listeners. Obviously, one, to start streaming from Spotify and hopefully get a membership there. But more importantly, if Spotify owns, you know, three or five of the best and biggest podcasts and they take them from iTunes, that gives them more advertising power. So that allows them to go over to companies like Coca-Cola or Charmin and or so Ford. Or, so you think they're mm. going to – so he's not going to do what he does now, right, where he starts the show and he does a read of sponsors or whatever? I now. wouldn't think so. Yeah, I think that whole section would probably be eliminated. Well, and just even, get right into the show. And even if he does, it's it won't be his anymore. It'll be – that'll be through, through Spotify. Yeah, so you, Spotify. Don't, you don't think this is just one of those pure plays that some of these tech companies do where they just want to suck all the users away from So everybody else? just jumps on that platform yeah. only? Yeah, I mean, there's – Exclusivity in it. That's obviously like a part of the incentive for it. But I do think that, uh, yeah, his ad revenue that he was already producing, well, that's got to be factored it in. W- yeah, w- it wouldn't make sense for that to happen. You, f- you figure, uh, you know, guesstimate that, that Joe has, you know, roughly 10 million listeners, let's just say, you know, for argument's sake. Uh, of those 10 million listeners, I would say 50% based off of our statistics, knowing our listenership. Fifty uh, percent of those people have Spotify. The other fifty percent do not. So five million. You, know, you have five million potential listeners to come over to Spotify. Well, five five million times nine dollars a month is still not enough to warrant that much uh, of a contract deal. But see, there's another part though. I don't think it's necessarily there's that, but I think it's also that the Rogan podcast is really really effective at bringing in the occasional, like non regular uh, listener. So like the Elon Musk episode, for example. I think on YouTube alone alone had 15 million yeah. views. So, I mean, there's a lot of power in that too where he's where they're going to get more people just coming to their platform to hear that one, you know, interview or whatever that he did, not necessarily regular. So sure. it's got to be a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, sure, but it, 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 you you would have to be giving up some of your rights too to to monetize yourself yeah. or else it wouldn't be I mean, also be a win all the way around for Joe. Be just a huge payday and then nothing changes. And then nothing changes. Yeah, yeah, other than you just put it all on one platform. No, you're you're giving up some of your rights, which I mean, let's be honest here, $100, $200 million, I think any of us would most certainly have that conversation. Now, well, what's interesting, too, is, so that means Spotify is going to be beefing up a lot more of their video option mm-hmm. part of it, which I didn't even consider. Like, I haven't, I haven't used Spotify much for podcasts, but the, the time I did use it, like, video was a little bit minimal, but the actual user experience was so much better. It was just like I could search for things a lot easier. I know a lot of people I've talked to really enjoy well, it. You they guys know it. me, right? I, since almost the beginning of this podcast, I've been repping Spotify. I've for a long time yeah. believed that they were going to dominate the space, and I think they've been a great company to watch. And yeah, you're right. If they, I mean, they're they're already uh, dominating the audio space, streaming space. Uh, if they start jumping into um, video and start taking some part of the market from YouTube. This is going to get interesting really fast. It yeah. is. It's really interesting that how these companies are starting to compete with each other. R- Rogan has got so much. It's incredible how much it's crazy. Yeah, how much influence he has uh, over the culture now. over a short period of time too. It, he well, he just is, really just took off. This is a very exciting time too for anybody that's in business and digital streaming. Whether mm-hmm. you're a YouTuber, you're a podcaster. I mean, if you are into that space, any of these spaces. And making, uh, you know, acquiring real estate and doing well for yourself, uh, there is a very good oper- or possibility that in the next, you know, 10 years, we're going to start seeing all these platforms starting to fight over each other, just much like athletes, mm-hmm. you know, and you'll you'll see Spotify offering uh, certain people well, back in the exclusivity. Di- you'll have YouTube probably starting to do it, and eventually we'll see iTunes, unless, and somebody was talking to me via DM about this when it came out, and I thought, well, that's a possibility. 
uh, you look at a company that's as powerful as Apple, you know, does Apple sit back and let Spotify do all this shit and then just acquire them? Mm, that's a, that's a, that's not a bad. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. talking about one of the one of the the most cash rich companies that are out there. That's not. It'd a bad be interesting point. because you know acquisitions rarely you know work. Uh, and the thing with the Beats acquisition, I think they. They might be hesitant because I don't think that went completely the way they wanted it to. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they made a lot of money off that wow. transaction. Wow, that's well. I mean, Rogan's just his influence is incredible. He's like the. I mean, you you said earlier like the Howard Stern of today. Yeah. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think the things that he says now, so many people listen. He's got crazy, you know, very very popular guests on the show. It's pretty crazy too because his the the way that the podcast medium works, it's long form. I mean, really, if you went back ten years. And you told people that one of the most popular interviewers uh, in the in the next ten years would be someone that does three hour shows. Yeah, nobody would believe you. Yeah, you know, it's really well, crazy. it's like hard to trust anything that's real short anymore. Yeah. You well, know? talking about you know cool tech companies right now, I, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but TikTok in Q one just reported over two billion uh, downloads, which broke the record of any app in the wow. past. Wow. So and then uh, Kevin Mayer, I believe is his name, he was. One of the executives with Disney is left to become the CEO uh, for uh, for TikTok. Really? Yeah. So now, is TikTok an American uh, company or is it a Chinese company? I, I'm pretty sure it's a Chinese company. Yeah. yeah if oh. Everybody confirmed that for me that's last time. That's interesting. I wonder if that's going to work against them as, as this this whole thing you know wears on. Or I just think that's even interesting that someone like that would. Leave. Now, I heard that he got snubbed because he was next in line to go behind Iger. So when he mm. when he got uh, uh, he was supposed to be the next CEO. They didn't give to him, and then then he got an opportunity with TikTok and took it. So he bounced with that. He was in charge of like running all their. He he launched Disney Plus and in charge of all their streaming. Now, now TikTok's oh, okay. super popular. I just don't get it, you know. And I think this is one hundred percent an age thing. Dude. Yes, it's one hundred percent the old thing. Well, here's the thing: it's, kids uh, are going crazy. I just with don't it. get it. A, a, attention today is 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 a commodity. I mean, so if you have if you have that many people's attention even if we think it's stupid and it's weird and we haven't figured out a right. good way to utilize it to monetize doesn't mean that it doesn't have the attention of billions of people and have the opportunity for that for advertising or whatever so i think what they did really well is they they allowed people like just enough to follow something like you know when when you're going to post something or you're going to do something on one of these platforms that are social it's like you got to just drum up whatever it is and they like have just all these dances all these different like challenges and all these things it's like you just like jump it's like the fucking macarena yeah <laughs> it's the macarena of all the uh social well, medias what i haven't seen yet and i and i i remember when snapchat was exploding and i, I had, I had a, yeah i had a hard time seeing how how would i use this to be a really useful tool for business um, and I, I dabbled in it for a little bit and I just didn't see it. And I, we had friends in the space that used it and actually had some success with it that I, I just don't see, uh, the application for TikTok for things that we do. And I've seen people in our space already do it. And I just, it's, it's not for me. And what I know of all the platforms, uh, because we're providing information mm -hmm. and it's long form conversation and education and entertainment, uh, it's not these short sound bites and clippy, uh, it just, doesn't work as well on something like that and i know there's somebody listening right now like oh my god you're missing out because it's there's, a whole different way of communicating yeah there's all kinds mm -hmm. of opportunity on tiktok i'm not denying that there's uh, opportunity there. i'm not denying there's an opportunity in snapchat i mean there's opportunity in twitter and we don't maximize that the what i know that we've done as a company is we've honed in on the platforms that work best with what we are doing right and so we put yeah. mo it's like an 80 20 rule yes we have real estate over in twitter yes we have some stuff in spotify yes we have all these other things that we've acquired stuff in but a lot of the energy and focus goes on the mediums that yeah. make as long the as they sense. have business value there you right. know then then we'll explore that but speaking of like trends one trend that ha has not died is tattoos what do you mean? Because, okay, so do you know in 1993, they found this mummy in Siberia that actually had tattoos still? Oh, like, wow. Huh? Like, yeah, 2,500 year old mummy that had tattoos all over, like really intricate ones too. Like, because uh, I think there was, there was mummies preceding that even uh, that just had like, you know, just like lines and scribbles, but this was like, 
deer antlers, griffin, and like like mountain sheep and all this stuff. Like like really like well done, like crafted uh, designs on on this this lady's that's arm. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's so crazy. I didn't know it was that have, old. Have you you guys have seen the way that they do the Polynesian? I think they are tattoos yeah, yeah, with the they, tapping. Oh, yeah. Brutal. Yeah, that's a very old tattoo technique. Apparently, uh-huh. it's supposed to be super super painful. Yeah. So the tattoos we get now, they hurt not like they did. No, no, not no. like they did back no, then. No. Yeah. <clears throat> are people using more of these platforms bec- now because they're stuck at home and stuff? Do you know anything like about that, Adam? Mm. Oh, as far as Imagine like so. Instagram and YouTube. Is there? Is it oh use yeah, up? The, the usage on all that stuff is up ridiculous. I think the stat. I think it was sixty percent or something. I don't remember what it was up, but it was up dramatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, there's some good news that so they found a human antibody that isolated. They found somebody who had recovered from the SARS virus back in 2003, and through their blood they found an antibody that neutralizes because you know the SARS virus is also a COVID. A, yeah. Excuse me. A, coronavirus right uh-huh. this particular antibody neutralizes the coronavirus the the, the covid 19 virus hmm. so they are getting fast track to produce this antibody as a potential treatment for people who get infected which is fascinating interesting yeah so you get this you get sick they give you this antibody and it acts like medicine to make you better oh interesting. which is yeah when i like that a lot because the vaccine i can already see people pushing back on Vaccine. The problem with vaccines, and I'm not saying whether they are good or bad or any of that stuff. I'm not going to get in that conversation. Mm. But the problem with them is they're preventative, mm-hmm. and anything that's preventative, people there'll be a debate rather than I'm already sick. Give me something. Yeah, and the, that I, makes I just, me better. Yeah, I just have reserves about them trying so hard to push it through fast. Like we have a lot of the checks and balances for reasons. You know, like sometimes, like oh no, like we actually injected. You know, cultures that were still getting people sick. Dude, there, there, that is not a bad uh, point. This is a r- speed record. At, at how fast we are getting a vaccine to go through the market. Yeah, I think that it's might like, not be a good thing. Well, who, yeah, I mean, it does increase the risk of potential problems and issues. And, boy, if, if it causes some of those, people are going to be like, uh-uh, I'm not doing any ever now. Right. You know what I mean? This is kind of an interesting point. But I want it to work, you know. Of course. I, I, you know, it's, I'm definitely for vaccines. Of course. There was uh, um, another article that I read about uh, mental health right now and uh, how mental health issues are spiking and some doctors, mental health doctors, are saying this is a matter. Now we're starting to weigh out. The risks are starting to change now. And forcing people to stay home might be causing a lot of people a lot of problems because of the fact that they're not out, they're not around. I notice it myself. Uh, how are you? I know your wife's at home. Jessica's at home mainly. And it's I can. she's starting to tell me that it's starting to affect her a little bit. Yeah, we had a moment, uh, and we were driving – um, this is another time where we kind of had a moment to just ourselves and not the kids. And, uh, we were just trying to have a good time picking up dinner and then just driving and we're going up and she just had this moment where all this tension just kept building up and just start crying, you mm. know, and was just like, it's just because she can't, she couldn't even hang out with her friends. She just, Oh, I know what, what sparked it. It, she just had like a zoom like happy hour meeting, kind of like we did, mm. uh, you know, but she did it with her friends uh, that she normally sees all the time because the kids, parents, you mm-hmm. know, they're the parents of, of our, uh, you know, the kids that, that are friends with our kids. And, um, you know, they became good friends and she hasn't seen him at all and, and like has been really isolated with, you know, there by herself. And it's like, I can't go anywhere. And, you know, it just builds up. And I totally understood. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, especially someone like Courtney, like I have a we have another friend, too, that. You know, if you were a, like a, a woman that has, you know, chose kind of the career path and busted your ass to get to a certain level of, of success mm-hmm. financially on your own, independent, working long hours like she has for a very long time, and she was able to manage that even while raising kids, and then to be at home, that's already a crazy transition, right? Taking that person and saying like, okay, now you're this stay-at-home mom, that's right. already challenging for that, that a person like that to go in that transition. Then you slap on like, oh, by the way, now you're going to become a teacher. Yeah, <laughs> you weren't planning on doing. Yeah, it. like talk about a compl- never in your plans. By so, the way, so yeah, exactly. So I totally feel. And you can't see your friends. You not you can't yeah, go to the so, mall or whatever just to relax or walk or hang out with people. I, yeah. I got to think that people similar to to Cor- Courtney, as far as that type of a situation, have to have some of the biggest oh. shocks. So that I mean, that Dude, would be really tough. I tell tough you to what, if, if if yeah. I didn't see you guys, because obviously we all of our employees are still at home. And I know I'm lucky because but yeah, if yeah. I didn't come and see you guys, and you know, 
be able to record these podcasts, I mean, it would be rough. Yeah. It'd be really, I, it is definitely great to get out, hang out, talk, do this, you know, podcasting, then go home. Yeah. But if you're just at home and then on top of it, you're doing schooling and all that stuff, oh, this is a, this is a very, very challenging time. I hope and I think we're going to come out of it with a higher level of gratitude. I already have, yeah. I'm already more self aware of the things that I took for granted without even realizing. Like being able to go over someone's house and you know, it'll be hand. interesting if that yeah, sticks totally. around. I actually just read an, uh, an article in Forbes today that was saying that uh, sixty percent. They surveyed all the uh, big comp- major Fortune five hundred companies, and they said sixty percent of the CFOs predict that we will not get back to normalcy with business for beyond twenty twenty one. So it's they're saying that this is going to be some, well, something that yeah. actually takes a while before we even now, get back to some good normal. news on that. Uh, you know, that's I I think that's probably true. Um, I would agree. This has been a bit, pretty big hit, and consumer behaviors are probably going to be changed. Here's the thing too: there's the damage from the forced shutdowns economically. But I think there's also the damage from consumer behaviors. We already saw changes in consumer behaviors before any of these, you know, shelter in places happened, just from people changing their behaviors. So there's definitely going to be some changes, but that also drives innovation. So it's going to be interesting mm-hmm. to see what is invented yeah. and created, how businesses find new ways of, of reaching people, um, how they're going to deliver their products and service this differently, you know, maybe how they change the way that they spend their money. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Are yeah. you guys getting a lot of family and friends that don't have to return to work? Like I, thought, I have a brother-in-law that that hasn't. I heard that uh, Facebook is contemplating right mm-hmm. now. I heard Twitter has already announced it. Uh, that you don't. That now that they've gotten through this time without everybody having to come into work, yep. they're realizing like, oh, maybe not. You just don't ever yep. have to come. My in. ex-wife doesn't have to mm-hmm. go back. She can work forever now wow. from home. That's uh, cool. My sister. Um, is also going to get the opportunity now to work at home all the time. And I think the reason is the company saw that productivity was still good. Yeah. Now, how weird is this going to be? Like, I'm sure all those people that now have that option are excited, right? That sounds cool. Like, I don't have to go back into work anymore. Now, how many people are going to start to yearn to go back to work, though? Oh, yeah. Like, just to, you, it will make you start to, like you said, appreciate those things, you know, of, mm-hmm. you know, instead of dreading going into the job every single day, you start to realize, like, oh, wow, actually, Going in and interacting with other other humans, even if it's at this you know boring office, is still a lot. Well, better it's kind of how I feel with the home gym thing too. You know, like I love it, and I love the convenience and the accessibility of it, and uh, you know I can do everything I need to do. But at the same time, I like the gym environment. I like being around you know other people lifting weights, and you know there is something to that. Uh, you know, these days it's more of the spa. No, but, man, we're yeah. social creatures. We are social creatures. You want to be around other people. I personally think here's the drawbacks from now being able to work from home all the time. The drawbacks are you don't get to see your the B and B around people like you were before. Believe it or not, that's going to be challenging for a lot of people. Here's the other one. N- now, when does work turn off? If you're always at home, your office is there anyway. You start to blend two spaces like what do they say about like not watching tv in bed right if you have oh, sleep yeah. issues what do they always say don't watch tv in bed the bed is only for sleep watch tv in other places oh this was uh-huh. the conversation my brother and i were having when he was sharing with me that he's not gonna have to go back and he's he's like you know i'm uh, he goes i'm really having a hard time with my routine and that was one of the things yeah. that he was saying was blending my my home life with my work life he goes you know i was when i had my schedule i had this you know I get up at five o'clock i do this 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 before i leave to work and then i'm at work and then i'm done by this time and then i shut down i'm done with work mm-hmm. where now he goes you know sometimes i uh, kind of take my time you know for a couple hours in the morning and then if i want to break i'm thinking about one of my hobbies i might go do my hobby for like a lot more distractions <clears throat> it is I, I mean but as an entrepreneur i think i can that's something I think we can relate to. That's uh, I've been used to that, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm used to learning to set boundaries with my home life and being with family or friends and separating the two because- It's a learning curve, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just takes time to do. I, I think there's lots of perks to it. I, I love the person, mm-hmm. and it's, I guess it's per person. Like some people love structure. They want to be like told, this is your time, this is mm-hmm. when you break. They do well in that situation. Other people like the freedom and the flexibility. I personally like the freedom and flexibility. Yeah. I like the ability for me to say, you know what, tonight I do feel like I'm going to stay up late. I'm going to grind all night long, and then maybe tomorrow I'm going to cruise. Like I like that. Yeah. Well, you're also an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, people who own their own businesses. You know, what do they say about entrepreneurs? They're the only people in the world that'll work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. Yeah. Like, yeah. We value <laughs> our our freedom so much, yeah, the autonomy. Uh, yeah, our autonomy so much that. That's what we value above all else. I like to be creative. I like to do what I want. 
A lot of people aren't like that, and that's that's totally fine. And that blending of both can be – I think there's going to be a, a learning curve. I think it's going to be a challenge. I personally think the the, the for most people, because, of course, everybody's different, I think it's going to be a little bit of a balance. Honestly, I think it probably will be something like – you go to work two or three days a week, and then the rest of the week you're at home. But you show up there, you have your meetings, you see your coworkers, you do your thing. I think that's still going to be important. I mean, think about like the team atmosphere. Yeah. How many companies do well because of the you know people working and collaborating and being around each other? The creativity that comes from that. Like when you're at home yeah. by yourself and you're Zoom calling. I mean, is that going to be the same? I think. Yeah, partial, you know, partial uh, meetings per week. I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, to keep that yeah. kind of dynamic and also just uh, to inform everybody what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Did you guys see the, the article on marijuana and uh, coronavirus? Oh, I did see it pop up in our forum. Did you, I didn't get a chance to read it, though, did you? So, okay. So this is why headlines are kind of crazy. It's like, you know, compound in marijuana may prevent coronavirus. That's kind of true, but not don't go smoke weed and then think you're not going to get the coronavirus. But anyway, there was a study <laughs> that, was that shows. Strategy. So there's this <laughs> yeah. there's this uh, this protein that acts as the primary gateway that the coronavirus gets into the body. It's called the ACE2. It's an ACE2 receptor, if you will. The ACE2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not the ACE2. <laughs> ACE2. Now, apparently, a combination of THC and CBD lowers the gene expression that produces and regulates this ACE2 protein or this receptor. So in other words... Using THC and CBD may actually reduce this receptor, which pre- prevents the virus from getting into your body. So it could help potentially. That's what they saw in one study, and they're theorizing that. So, <laughs> what's so funny about that? I just think it's like reaching, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm so pro marijuana, and I think that's reaching. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be funny, though? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> How hilarious would that be? We felt, the, we felt, everybody starts smoking weed right now. Yeah. You won't get sick. <laughs> Could you imagine, All right. Uh, could you imagine dude, that? So People funny. would forget. Yeah. <laughs> they forget to do it. They That'd forget the problem. To, uh, yeah. what was going on. Anyway, yeah. dude, um, I wanted to sh- give a shout out to uh, Serene. She did an excellent. Her, oh, her, her YouTube video did very well. Her last YouTube. She's video, been killing it. It's yeah. going viral right now. Uh, really, really good. I think it was titled like the the prerequisites uh, to before getting six pack abs or something. Yeah, like it's that. a really good basically for core. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so good. And it, you know, I, and I'm not sure that we did a demo like this on uh, YouTube before, and I know we've talked about on the podcast several times about uh, teaching a perfect setup, right? Mm. And I know we've talked about a perfect setup, and I believe we had uh, Stephanie on there a long time ago who taught taught one. But what I liked that Serene did is the perfect setup is damn near impossible for like 80% of the clients that I ever trained oh, yeah. to do it really, to do it right. Right. So she teaches the regression of it and how to teach someone to be able to do it mm. with the band. And so that I think is extremely valuable. So if you haven't gone on there and you know, you're looking for good ab training, I really think that that video, what she gets into probably really encompasses what everybody should start with and really get the, the ability to like, articulate the hips and the spine really, really well so you can get full contraction and, and control of your abs, which most people lack and don't even realize. Yeah, the name, the name of the video is the number one movement prerequisite to building six-pack abs. So with the with the perfect setup, when you're doing that, what you're, what you're really doing is you're really getting the abs to lift your body mm-hmm. up off the bl- floor so you do a sit-up. One of the biggest problems with the way people train their core is that they confuse this – this you know lumbar spine flexion with hip flexion and so they do a lot of hip flexors or the abs just stabilize while they do what looks like a good ab or core exercise so this particular movement that she shows in this video she shows you regressions because a perfect sit up if you have poor connection you know I, I know we use that word loosely or that term loosely but in other words if you have trouble really fully working and contracting the abs in a in a full range of motion doing a perfect setup can be really really hard mm-hmm. for a lot of people especially when you do it really really slow so she shows yeah. you ways to scale it back feel the movement move through this was a game changer for me not this particular movement but what she's addressing was a game changer when right. i finally realized this my abs went from you know, you couldn't really see them unless I was shredded to, wow, you could see them even when my body fat percentage is higher. Oh, this was a game changer. This was a game changer for me, for sure. I mean, because after you really understand how to do a perfect setup, 
you apply that form to every other ab exercise. Yeah, now mm-hmm. you can recruit that every yeah. time you do something. Oh, yeah. even when we do, uh, what's your favorite one that you do on the decline bench that you love to do all the um, the sit ups that you always like to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that understanding how to keep your chin and your spine rolled as you open up and and roll out versus just fly, flapping back and up uh-huh. because, like you said. A lot of times, people they feel it in their abs because their abs are tensing. It's, it's like an iso- isometric yeah, hold. Yeah. yeah, it's like an isometric exercise. They're tensing like crazy. If you have somebody on a decline sit-up bench and, like, say they're holding a weight or whatever, and they go back, pay attention. Most people have like a straight back and yep. they go all the way down and they come back up. And yeah, they feel it in their abs because they're isometric con- contracted and they're holding weight, so it's hard. But they're actually not doing that movement right. In fact, when you are in that position, you should be in this crunched over rolled position and then you should unroll yourself and roll back and it was the perfect setup and learning to train that first that just like completely changed how i did all ever exercises yeah you, once you once you kind of figure out how what the full action of a muscle is then when you train that muscle in an exercise you can really yes. maximize the benefit of that exercise but first you have to know how what that muscle does in its full action now the way you learn that is not by going on the internet and looking up you know what is the function of the bicep what is the function of the quadricep what is the function mm-hmm. of the abs that'll give you a clue but the problem is if you don't know what it feels like or looks you, like you can't access it yeah. right you can't access it until you can feel it mm-hmm. so when you do these movements properly and you start to feel oh that's what it's supposed to feel like now you understand the difference between my, well, my abs are just tense and when I'm moving it through a full range of motion. And remember, when we talk about videos like this, like Jackie puts the link in the show notes. So it's, what is it, at the our uh, mindpumppodcast.com, right, Doug? That's it. Correct. Right, That's so you it. go to mindpumppodcast.com on this episode and there'll be a show link for the videos anytime mm-hmm. we talk about stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, by the way, this is why, this is one of the ways that priming really benefits uh, the body. One of the big reasons why you may have a body part that's just not responding, like your abs or let's say it's your glutes or something else, is because you don't really fully understand what it feels like to move it through a full range of motion to really connect to it. You just don't know because you haven't been doing it. You don't know what that feels like. So how can you possibly access it? Well, when you prime properly before your workouts, then you do that then you get into the exercise. Like I know what I know what to aim for. You know what yeah. I mean? I know what I'm supposed to feel, and now I can adjust the exercise and cause it to feel that way. And then you get exceptional results. First question is from Kyle Fenlay. What is the best supplement for or remedy for joint pain? I've been running a lot more on the street and have been experiencing some knee pain. Let's fix the question first, because mm. um, usually, I mean, this is common, right? The first place people look. When they have the a source. problem, is let me let me take something to fix that. Now, are there supplements that can help with inflammation that can help with this kind of stuff? Yes. Are those things going to fix the root cause of the pain? Probably not. It's what your 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 knee hurts. Probably not because you're not taking a supplement. It's probably because you're not moving in a way that is optimal for your knee. Now, more often than not, knee pain in my experience training people comes from either you go up and down. It's either the hips or more commonly it's coming from the feet and the ankles. And so I'd say work on mobility on those and then see what happens. Well, this is what's exciting about the Prime webinar that Justin just did because this is – this this and if you, if you have questions like this, if you're listening right now and you're trying to get to the bottom of your knee or your hip or your neck or your shoulder or low back and you've got pain issues and you're not sure what it is – you should be in this webinar. It's free, like absolutely. I don't. I don't think I've ever had a client that it wasn't due to those things, Sal. It, mm-hmm. it, it, unless it was an, an acute injury, right? Unless somebody broke something, you broke something or br- tore something. Yeah, It'd be tore. very obvious as how it, it happened at right. that point. If you're not sure of it, it's always, in my opinion, a movement issue. Mm-hmm. You're not moving properly, and then it's stressing a joint, right, or That's a right. ligament. So look into that and that's why we, why we created prime that's why we also did this webinar for free is to help people assess themselves and get to the bottom of it and something like that it's not a just one time quick fix it's you, there's work to be done there and you got to correct those patterns which means it's going to take some time and some effort but the beauty is man i tell you when when you do 
it's amazing. I mean, I, I battled with low back pain and bursitis as a trainer, as somebody working out and has abs and looked all great and, you know, think everything on the outside looking in, everybody thought uh, it must be in perfect shape. But no, nah, inside, I, there, I still had movement issues that I wasn't moving properly. And so I was still battling with the bursitis in my hips and the low back. It wasn't until I addressed all that, which took some work. Um, but once I did, it completely eliminated that. So you got to get to the bottom. You got to get to the root cause. Make sure you're in the webinar. Yeah. Well, and I also think a lot of people just aren't really aware of, you know, what good proper movement and technique really looks like. You know, uh, I, I think that uh, people assume that if they can get into certain positions, that that's everything. Like this is, I can get into this position, but now all of a sudden I feel pain. How do I remedy this pain? You know, where where is the movement dysfunction? Where is that occurring? And you have to go through some bit of like investigative work for that. And that's why we tried to we tried to simplify it as much as we could to really pinpoint, okay, if you can't move your ankle this way, way or your knee doesn't have this full range of motion uh, because there's restriction in the hip or there's restriction, you know, based off of like your feet stabilizing properly. Uh, you know, these are all things that are going to contribute to pulling your knees into a, an unfavorable position. Yeah. Look, it's, it's, this is a very, this is an analogy and it's, uh, it sounds silly, but it's, it's very similar. It's like somebody banging their head against the wall and they're like, man, my head hurts. Like, do you have any medicine I can take to help me with my head hurting? Or do you have a helmet I could wear yeah. so that my head doesn't hurt? And you're just like, just don't bang your head against the wall. When you're having these kind of chronic problems, find the root and fix it because no supplement, no medicine is going to fix that. In fact, we know this. Look, the most powerful pain-relieving over-the-counter things you could take are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Ibuprofen uh, is one of them. Naproxen is another one. Studies actually show that using those regularly contributes to more problems, partially because it blunts the pain, the, the, the inflammatory signal, which is part of the heal, healing process. And the other one is probably because people don't fix the root cause because, oh, I take this pill, I don't hurt anymore, so I'm just going to keep mm -hmm. hammering myself. Here's the proper way to use supplements in this case. If your pain is preventing you from doing good mobility movements, I would say, Look at some supplements that can help balance out the inflammatory process. Don't block the inflammatory process with drugs, but see how, can, how you can balance them out. So fish oil, if your diet is lacking on omega-3s, can actually reduce inflammation. Turmeric, Turmeric mm -hmm. uh, is another one that can actually reduce inflammation. Organifi makes a supplement called Move that contains some you know, holy basil and some other com components that have been shown to balance out the inflammatory process in the body. Taking that supplement, you'll notice general less stiffness. But again, I'm going to stress this. If your knee pain goes away because of a supplement, that doesn't mean you fixed why your knee was hurting in the first place. Right. Look at your mobility. Look at your hips. If it's your knee, look at your hips, ankles, and feet. The, the odds are that's where the problem's coming from. Next question is from Russell Gerwer. With all the uncertainty around gyms reopening, everyone is investing in at-home gyms to progress their fitness during these challenging times. What, in your opinion, are the must-have pieces of equipment for a, an at-home gym? Mm. What should someone expect to spend? Now, first off, um, you don't need any equipment to work out. Okay, that's true. Now, equipment makes it a lot easier, and it gives you much more variety, novelty. gives you a lot more options. But you really don't necessarily need equipment or much equipment at all to have a good workout. I mean, we, we create a program called Maps Anywhere where all you need is a, is a stick. So you can use a broomstick and resistance bands very, very minimally. Now, that being said, if somebody says, I want to buy equipment so I can work out, the first piece of equipment that I would recommend you buy is dumbbells. Dumbbells are the most versatile piece of equipment that exists. I could do, I could train any body part uh, with a pair of just adjustable dumbbells. So I'll say, I'll, I'll start right there. Well, I, I think that, um, I mean, we love our PRX setup. I mean, that's I mean, we we built it at this place. We we're getting it done in the studio. Justin has one in his house. So mm -hmm. I, I love how functional it is. I, know, I love how you can tuck it away on the wall and still use your garage for parking your car. So I think that's, I think the question that you have to first ask yourself, though, is, is this going to be a, a potential long-term solution for you? Or do you have plans to, as soon as 
the gyms open back up, you're done utilizing these tools and you're going back in. If that's the case, I actually wouldn't invest very much at all. In fact, I would just say, hey, here's a great time for me to do training like I would never do it before, to your mm-hmm. original point, Sal, which is you know, doing like a Maps Anywhere type of program, which doesn't require any equipment whatsoever. And, you know, I know that's hard for some of us guys that have been used to lifting in the gym all the time. But one of the best things sometimes for that client that's training all the time that would be like a two month hiatus away from the gym and doing something that's more body weight Mm -hmm. focused. You'll have great. You may not see the, the, the same gains that you were getting when you were lifting heavy weight inside the gym, but you'll see when you come back, a lot of times the gains accelerate. So you know, one of the best things for someone that is thinking that this is just for this temporary time while we're all in shelter in place, you know, I don't know if I go out and invest thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars to try and and get some equipment just to kind of hold me over until I'm going to go back in the gym. If my plan is to go back in the gym, Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow a program that maybe doesn't require hardly anything and train, train areas or do mobility like we've talked about before and focus on areas that I'm probably not addressing as much when I go inside the gym and do meathead style lifting, then I would do that. But if you think that this may be uh, a, a potential change forever, like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of digging this being at home or, you know what, I'm going to invest at home. Who knows when these gyms are going to open and maybe that's going to be my new place that I work out. Well, then, yeah, I mean, I, I, PRX, I think, is the best at this. I, I love working at home. It's yeah. always been my favorite. And in, in all I need for me to do all my workouts are dumbbells, barbell, and some kind of a rack. PRX rack is my favorite. Um, it takes, it's so low profile. It's very, very sturdy. It literally folds up into the wall. But some kind of a rack so you can squat off of it, you can bench off of it, and an adjustable bench. Dumbbells, barbells, squat rack, adjustable bench. I can do everything. Mm -hmm. I can do everything with that. I really don't need anything else. You could throw resistance bands in it. You could throw a couple of things. But that's all I would say you need. Now, a rack, dumbbells, a barbell, adjustable bench, you could get for – And now, here's a problem – Unfortunately, as of the recording of this podcast, equipment is hard to come by, mm-hmm. so the price of everything has gone up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Before all this went down, I would say you could get all of that for anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars for good quality, you know, pretty sturdy equipment. Not tons and tons of weight, but enough for most Take people. Three yeah. X that now. Yeah, now it's going to be kind of tough to find stuff. Things are the, the markup on them is just well. I know. B- I talked a bit to to the guys over at PRX, and uh, I know that their their racks are still available, and they're shipping those out uh, pretty pretty uh, good time wise. But the the plates are really hard to come by now. You know, dumbbells, obviously, those types of things. Um, uh, if you're going for the long term strategy, I do think that you know a good rack is definitely a good investment. Uh, you know, wherever you could find one, or even if you're a dude it yourself you know kind of a person you're handy and you can build we've seen a few examples of that on the forum and people getting creative uh but i do find that to be very useful that and you know an adjustable Mm. bench and like you said uh but i also really like kettlebells and i just like Mm. them for the short-term strategy for the versatility they provide for the different stimulus they provide you can have a lot of uh, workouts that are similar to dumbbell workouts but now it's just loaded different It, it provides a little different type of range of motion and i just uh, i tend to gravitate towards that for outdoor workouts and things like that for a nice change of pace I, along those lines justin I, I mean i like suspension trainers too. yes of oh, course yeah. you know uh you can get those for uh, very reasonable online they still they're still available um and you could strap one of those up to almost anywhere a tree outside and get a phenomenal worker and a lot of people don't know this in our maps anywhere program we actually have a suspension trainer mod. There's a whole series of exercises that Justin and I, Justin and I shot mm-hmm. uh, well before we got together with Sal and Doug and created Mind Pump. We had uh, built, built out some programming that was around the suspension trainer. So if you have the Maps Anywhere program, you actually have access to it already. And that's a very reasonably priced piece of equipment that you can do anything on. You yeah. can. And, and, and while all of this stuff is going on, while all this uncertainty is going on, we're gonna keep uh, Maps Anywhere at, at half off. What's the code for that again? Is it white? Is it white fifty for Maps Anywhere? Yes, white fifty. White fifty. So you go, you could, you could use that code and get half off, and that's a great, you know, almost equipment free workout. All you need are bands and a stick. Next question is from Adam Kotzmeyer. In your experience, what's the most effective weekly caloric surplus when trying to put on weight and muscle? 
Mm. Weekly caloric surplus. Not uh, very much. Yeah, wow. You know what? It depends, right? It depends on the person, but I, I think Adam's 100% right. I used to think it was a huge surplus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First off, it depends on the person, okay? So if you're somebody with a really fast metabolism, you burn a lot of calories, you're going to need to eat a lot more calories to get a surplus than, than other people. But I would say if you want to make sure that it's lean body mass, I wouldn't go above, I mean, 500 calories over your daily requirements is a pretty decent surplus. It's still pretty big. That'll ensure that you're gaining a decent amount of muscle with a good program, but you can even do it with like a 200 calorie. Yeah, I, I love the 250 to 500 range. The thing that comes with that though is the the mental fuck. You just got to be ready for that because when you when you if you do it just right and you're hitting the sweet spot, you don't see a huge jump on the scale. So and and that's the hard part the about muscle doesn't pile on super fast. No, and 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 if you got good programming, there's a good chance you're also leaning out, so you could be losing body fat. So you know, don't use the scale as your your main guide of you're doing a good job of gaining muscle. You could be doing a great job of gaining muscle, but not really moving. In fact, that's my I, if I know I'm on a new program, right? That's one of my favorite things. I switch a client that was just leaning out. Now we're switching over to a muscle building. When I switch to muscle building, I like to switch the stimulus. So I want a whole new program. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter what we were following before. We're following something new, so it's a new stimulus. And now, and in addition to that, I'm going to bump 200 to 500 calories to their diet and just let the, let the programming and the good consistency of the diet do its work. And I'm not going to stress about the scale. Now, if I see the scale going down, that's an indicator I could definitely probably bump a few more calories in there. But if I stay about the same or see just a little bit of an increase on the scale, I know I'm probably right in that sweet spot. And I've found that falls somewhere around that 250, 500 to hit the sweet spot. Also, like Sal said, depending on the person, where I start to get in trouble uh, myself and anytime I've done this with clients is when I start pushing 1,000 calories yeah. and beyond. And the problem with that is that helps you mentally because when you're pushing 1,000 calories, you're going to put weight on. I mean, the extra carbs and calories, the water weight you're going to add, the probably the body fat that's going to come on with it, that's a little more motivating because you're going to get on the scale every week. Oh, I'm up two more pounds. Oh, I'm up two more pounds. And so you think you're in this, you're having great progress, but in ra reality, kind of like what we talked about before, you're starting to add body fat at just as high as a rate as you're putting muscle on. And in, ch and in fact, you'll end up having a higher body fat. Yeah. Percentage. Now, how do you mm. figure this out for yourself? Um, I would suggest you get yourself a, a food tracking app, track your food intake for the next couple of weeks. Don't change anything at all. And then just go 250 to 500 calories above that. Make sure your protein intake is high. So you want to aim for around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So make sure that that's there first. Then when you add the extra calories, you can do it in the form of fat or carbohydrates. That's totally up to you. Some people do better with a higher fat diet. Some people do better with a higher carbohydrate diet. I gain more muscle when they're rough, generally balanced. If I go low carb, I tend to not get as great of a performance than with I have a, a decent amount of carbs. Not super high for me that tends to bother my gut, but 250 to 500 a day. By the way, this is an average. One thing we didn't say was it doesn't have to be 250 to 500 surplus every day. Right. In fact, I think it's better where some days are higher and other days are lower. So maybe mm. you have a 100 calorie surplus one day, the next day it's 600 calorie surplus, the next day it's 400 calorie. But overall for the whole week, you're averaging 250 to 500 more calories a day than you were eating before. Next question is from Randy Weezy 22 What's your take on doing a weekly 24-hour fast? I'd like to do a monthly 48-hour fast as it is, but I'd like to consider doing a 24-hour weekly fast to reset and get things flowing better for the rest of the week. I like both of those. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. Just make sure they're for the right reasons, That's right? That's it right there. I mean, I, I like both of them, but it does, I mean... Don't use it for a weight loss strategy. That's what I tend to see. Like people think it's a good weight loss strategy. I don't think it's that. That's the reason why I prefer the 48 to 72 once a month over the every single week. But I think the the right person in the right mindset that isn't uh, using it as a, oh, a way for you to restrict calories uh, and just to lose weight. I think if you're doing it for all the other reasons, I think it's a very valuable tool. No, fa fasting when it's used as a, as a way of detaching as a way of meditation, as a spiritual practice, um, as a way to reset your how you're, you're craving food, reset your relationship to food uh, in a healthy way, great. It's a wonderful tool. If you start to fast because you're trying to lose weight, that's called starving yourself. That turns into yeah. a bad relationship to food. 
never really works out well. If anything, it actually it can it contributes to. Here's how you know if you're fasting, if fasting is working for you. Do you find yourself binging afterwards? Mm. If you find yourself binging afterwards, then you're probably not doing fasting for the right reasons. If you fast the right way, uh, when you're done, you ease into eating and you find that your your relationship to food and your your eating habits are just healthier. And I don't mean healthier by the food you're eating. That's part of it. But I mean healthy in the sense of how you feel. You feel comfortable moving forward. Now, I prefer longer fasts less frequently than shorter fasts more frequently, personally. Yeah, that was kind of my thought. Uh, and I went through a period where I was trying to do a fast a lot more frequently. Like It was like every other week I would do one 24-hour fast. And, you know, I loved it for the digestive benefits. So just to allow my body to really uh, reset and, and uh, I've, I have like certain issues already I'm working on, um, you know, with my digestive tract. So this allowed me to just be able to, um, you know, come back fresh and, and feel like, you know, like I had enough adequate time to uh, be able to benefit from that and like perform better in terms of my eating. Um, but it, I started to do it so frequently to where it, it was affecting my energy levels. And this is something I did. I, it was very subtle. Uh, but it really added up after a while where I would feel that effect in the gym and just, you know, uh, having a hard time putting food down and really like, uh, you know, having that hunger, that hunger was so suppressed at a certain point that I had to start really working on adding breakfasts back in and adding, you know, more frequency of eating. Uh, so you just got to be conscious of like what that, that balance is for you specifically. Yeah. Fasting done for the wrong, I mean, wrong reasons or for the wrong people applied improperly, um, can cause hormone issues and cause performance issues. Um, and of course it could, it could contribute to a bad relationship to food that looks like starving and binging. So if you're going to fast, uh, don't do it for body composition goals. If, if that's your reason, then you're doing it uh, the wrong way. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. You can download all of our guides, resources, and books. You can also find all of us on Instagram, including the producer, Doug. You can find Doug at mind pump Doug. You can find Justin at mind pump Justin, Adam at mind pump Adam, and me at mind pump Sal.